Let's bring in our friend J.P. Morosi right now as we are leading the league with J.P. And J.P., uh, this news coming down involving Ron Washington, fantastic news. I think if you're an Angels fan, if you're a fan of Ron Washington, how did this all come together for Perry Manazzi? Good morning, Adnan, Jake, and Lauren. Yes, whether it's Matt Olson working on his defense or Lauren Shahadi working on her defense, Ron Washington brings out the best in everybody, and the Angels certainly counting on that as they look towards the future. It's been a disappointing season, certainly for the Angels. They needed a bit of a, a positivity to come in, and the instruction, the teaching, the energy, Ron Washington can deliver that. The Angels looked around, spoke with multiple candidates. Buck Showalter was on the list as well, but I think they decided, Adnan, that when you look at the totality of what they needed, a veteran club with the likes of Mike Trout still, unless, of course, he's traded, which we don't expect, uh, Anthony Rendon as well, a young shortstop in Zach Neto, a rotation that has to find a way to compete in a very difficult American League West. That combination of energy, baseball acumen, instruction, culture, all of those elements were the reason why the Angels chose Ron Washington yesterday. Uh, Artie Moreno certainly very involved in the choice. They looked at a wide range of candidates, including some former Angels legends, players like Darren Erstad, but ultimately Ron Washington, the choice. His former team, the Rangers, wins the World Series this year. Now Wash tries to do the same in the same division in 2024. Love Darren Erston as a player. That's an interesting pick, perhaps down the line as a manager. But uh, again, congrats to Ron Washington. Other managerial vacancies? What are we hearing right now, JP? So still, obviously, three to go and a lot of interest in those remaining openings. I'll begin <clears throat> here with the Padres. Uh, they are getting closer. AJ Prother told us yesterday that they are nearing the final stages of a decision. Might not be today but probably before the end of the week. Uh, they're a group that, when you look at their options, they may end up staying internal. Uh, Ryan Flaherty, Mike Schilt have been the possibilities mentioned there. Benji Hill as well. We talked yesterday about the presidential endorsement from President Lopez Obrador of Mexico to <laughs> hire Benji Hill, so maybe we'll see that move. Uh, Ray Montgomery, we discussed him as well. Uh, I think he's a name to watch with the Astros. Uh, Ray Montgomery, a contemporary of Dana Brown and Jeff Bagwell. I think that could be a really good fit for him. And of course, the Brewers, as we documented yesterday, Don Mattingly uh, on their list. Interestingly, uh, we spoke a little bit uh, with the Padres to see A.J. Preller's favorite player as a kid was Don Mattingly. But uh, I, I'm not sure if, if that would be the best dynamic to have with your boss saying, hey, man, you're my favorite player as a kid. Uh, so perhaps uh, maybe Donnie Baseball <laughs> goes to the Brewers and the Padres hire someone else. Well, you're right, JP. John Schneider, of course, the manager of the Blue Jays, also idolized Don Mattingly growing up. Mattingly is his bench coach. So I'm always curious how that dynamic works. Before we shift to the next topic, I do want to say a word or two about David Ross because I think he's a terrific manager, a great guy, Peeve. Obviously, he was a terrific player. And I, I just feel from what happened there in Chicago, like I, 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 I guess I understand the Cubs saying, well, Craig Council's a veteran manager. He's had success. But like Rossi takes this team. They win the division. Then two years, they, they offload a bunch of their star players. So they're clearly in a rebuild. This year, I think they overachieved by the they fact did. they're in playoff position. They did. And, and now he's out of a job. Like, I, I, I really don't get it, to be honest with you. And I, I hope Rossi gets one of those managerial vacancies out there. JP, is his name being floated around? Yes, and I do think the Padres are considering David Ross. I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned his name there, Adnan, because that might explain why they have not yet made their decision that with David Ross entering the, the managerial marketplace as of Monday, everything you said is completely correct. Of course, Jake won a World Series with David 10 years ago, and, and you think about that connection and all the things that David Ross has meant to the game. I, I know a lot of people on Monday uh, when the council news came out about him going to the Cubs, I think their first thought was exactly what you articulated about the respect that we all have uh, for the great David Ross. So I, I do believe David's going to have another chance to manage. It could be right away. It yeah. could be down the line. But the one thing about the Padres, Adnan and Jake, and why David Ross would be so good there, that's that was a clubhouse that had some issues documented during the course of the year in terms of not being united. David Ross is a uniter. No, oh, a thousand percent. Great communicator and well-respected by all. All right, I got to give Harold credit on this one, JP. When Bryce started taking some ground balls at first base, he said this isn't temporary to get him back in the lineup. This is going to be the situation moving forward. I was skeptical, but this is going to be the case, right? He's going to be at first base moving forward? Yes, that was some significant news in the industry yesterday. Dave Dombrowski speaking with reporters here and, and – 
sharing that it's now going to be Bryce Harper playing first base for the Phillies, which really is a headline on two levels. Number one, Dave Dombrowski saying he believes that Bryce Harper can become a gold glove defender at first base, in addition to all that he does in the batter's box and around the bases and in the clubhouse, that we did see him play a very capable, I thought a very good first base throughout the postseason. So that's the news there. Bryce Harper is your first baseman. What that also means is that it's probably the end for Reese Hoskins with the Philadelphia Phillies, one of the most beloved players of this generation, but there's just not a spot for him if you're going to have Harper at first, Schwarber likely the DH. They love the athleticism in the outfield with Rojas in center and Marsh in left in particular. Of course, Castellanos in right. There's just not every day at bats for Reese Hoskins. So I think that really puts a lot of focus on where Hoskins could sign, and it gives a little bit of a greater clarity to the way Bryce will approach his offseason work. Yeah, it definitely gives, gives him some more options now moving forward. And one more for you. Ben Sherrington says he spoke with Andrew McCutcheon a few times. How's it looking about Cutch coming back one more year with the Bucks? The word that Ben Sherrington used yesterday, Adnan, is hopeful. He is hopeful that, that Andrew McCutcheon comes back to the Pirates, still some milestones to gain for Kutch. Of course, Pittsburgh has been his home ever since he even left the Pirates. So this it's really a homecoming story for him. How warmly he was received last year, how well he played, frankly. A tremendous first half. Obviously, the injuries uh, became an issue later on in the season. So uh, the hope is that he comes back. He did have that salute, the final, the final game perhaps, uh, or, or around the time of the, at the end of the season, wondering if that was going to be his last game. But I, I, I do think that both what Andrew has expressed and the Pirates' interest in bringing him back. When I was speaking to Ben Charrington yesterday, Adnan, I got the distinct sense that Andrew McCutcheon, number 22, will be back in the Steel City in 2024. I love to hear that, man. They signed on a one-year, $5 million deal. Right, Pete? And that ended up working out for both sides. Well, we need these stories around the game. There's nothing better than, than seeing number 22 in the black and gold. Like you said, he is Pittsburgh. For him to lead that next bunch of guys and pass the torch on, I think is critical for our game. So, That's exciting awesome. news, JP. All right, JP, good stuff. We're going to talk to Ben Sherrington later on in the hot, so we'll check back a little later on. Good stuff, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.